Okay, welcome back. So today is the third uh, lecture um, of this course. In the last class, we had done uh, quite a few of things. Uh, we had introduced the uh, concepts of Fermi function, which is the probability of uh, finding an electron at an energy. We introduced the concept of Fermi level. Uh, we said that Fermi level is a statistical construct where there is a 50 percent probability of finding an electron at any temperature. Okay. We also uh, elaborated on the E k diagram in the presence of uh, the real crystals, you know, the how electrons move in the real crystal and how uh, the E k diagram can capture the, the physics of electron transport by summarizing everything in an effective mass term. Okay. Uh, we can uh, designate the effective mass of electron as m star which will basically take into account the effect of the, the band structure, the quantum mechanics of the transport. So, we do not have to worry so much, we can apply classical equation to that. Uh, we also introduced some very important concept required for this entire course that is whole. We said that when electron goes from a valence band to a conduction band for example, it leaves behind a vacancy. That vacancy is called hole, it is like a quasi particle and it moves in the direction of the applied field. So, it has a positive charge and holes are actually absences of electron, but it is convenient to model them as particles. And so, hole has its own uh, effective mass, hole has its own E k diagram. Uh, and from uh, the E k diagram, if the, the valence band and the conduction band, they are, they are the, the, the peak and peak positions at the same k, then we call it direct band gap, we call it indirect band gap if they are not in the same position. So, all these things we discussed, you know, how indirect band gap semiconductor like silicon cannot be used for making LED. So, all the white light LEDs that you see in the town, in the market, everywhere, those are not made of silicon because silicon cannot emit light. You need a direct band gap material. I told you that a direct band gap material, if it has an energy of band gap E, G, then the wavelength of the light that is emitted also will be, uh, will give a H C by lambda will be E, G, the band gap of the material. Okay. So, now I told you that the most important thing after that to learn today is density of states. So, we shall introduce density of states and we shall introduce the concepts of doping. So, then we are basically uh, ready to understand how electrons and holes fill up the bands and how carrier transport takes place. Okay. So, we will come to the whiteboard and start, start with density of states. Okay. So, uh, you might see in the last class, you know, I told you that there is Fermi function which gives you probability, right, which gives you the probability of finding uh, electron and then density of states is another very important concept and together with Fermi function and density of states, you can find out the number of electrons or number of holes. Okay. Um, and you need to know the number of electrons and holes because only then you can find out the current density and only when you can find out the current density, you can actually talk about devices, right. Any device carries current, right, whether it is a solar cell or BJT does not matter. So, we need to understand how many electrons holes are there. For that, we need density of states and we need Fermi function. We derive the Fermi function, the Fermi probability in a very simplistic manner and density of states is something we will talk about right now. Okay. So, what actually is density of states? It is a very in interesting concept, right? Density of states. Density of states actually means, if you, you know, think about it, it means actually the number of states, okay? The number of states available, okay? Number of states, energy, states available per unit energy, okay? Per unit volume okay so in each unit volume per unit energy how many energy states are there okay how many states are there which electrons can occupy now this is a function of energy i will call it g of e okay this is a function of energy okay and there are very very interesting ways to derive the expression as to how many states can be there and for that you have to take help of k space the reciprocal space you take like a sphere and then you find out how many discrete states are there and so on. So, the derivation of the density of states is something we will not do here. I can, I will put it up in my notes which I will upload so you can study the notes. But in general, the density of states, uh, you know, it is a number of available states. So, if the number of available states is for example, 10 to the power 19 states are there, we will in per unit energy per unit volume, we will call it per electron volt per centimeter cube. So, the unit of density of states is per electron volt per centimeter cube uh, okay. and if they say 10 to the power 19, so we know that there are 10 to the power 19 states per energy, unit energy per centimeter cube. Uh, one thing to note here in is that in semiconductor devices or in semiconductor physics uh, from the device point of view, uh, the units that are used are CGS units, not the MKS units. We use CGS units. So, it is always centimeter and not meter. 
that we use. So, for example, if we talk about the number of electrons or number of holes, then we normalize it with respect to volume. So, it will be number of electrons per centimeter cube or number of holes per centimeter cube, which means you know in 1 by 1 centimeter in 1 by 1 centimeter cube 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter how many electrons would be there for example okay that is how we give the nomenclature uh, of the, the units uh, in semiconductor devices we do not generally use meter okay. So, similarly capacitance will be farad per centimeter or farad per centimeter square for example. So, this is uh, something we should keep in mind okay because uh, it will be useful in doing calculations and numericals later on. So, I told you the density of states is the number of energy states available per unit energy per unit volume which is per, you know this and it basically has an expression I, I said that I will not derive it the density of states has an expression something like 4 pi by h cube it is not h bar by the way it is h cube 2 m star the effective mass of electron or hole as you might take to the power 3 by 2 into square root of e. So, it goes as square root of e. So, if you plot density of states versus e then it will go as square root of it will go as square root of e. So, as energy increases the number of available states also increases as the square root ok. The number of available states per unit energy this is per unit energy per unit volume everything is normalized with respect to volume. Remember electron or hole density is also normalized with respect to volume because that is how you should do it I mean uh, if you take a semiconductor crystal it always makes sense to talk about unit volume ok uh, you normalize to volume ok. And I started this not from 0 you see this you see this point I started did not I did not start from this point from 0 I started it from some point here do you know why because this point is the conduction band E c the bottom of the conduction band. What I mean is if I have by the way in semiconductor devices we do not you know from the device point of view we do not draw these boxes of conduction band in valence band that we do not do what we do in, in is a convention it is just the you know the way it is designated in semiconductor device physics we just put sorry we just put a straight line as conduction band and a straight line as valence band here the gap between them is your energy band gap what this straight line means is actually the bottom of the energy band this is the top of the valence band this is the bottom of the conduction band if you recall your ek diagram right this is e this is k right. So, this bottom is actually this that is represented with respect to position and this is this bottom most position is where your conduction band starts below that there is no conduction band right. So, this position actually corresponds to this what it means is that only from only from the bottom of the conduction band you can start filling up you cannot fill up below it because below there is gap there is no nothing right. So, below this portion below you cannot have any density of states. Why? Because there are no states in the band gap, you only have states here in the conduction band, right. So, it starts from here, ok. So, essentially it is E minus E c, E c is the bottom of the conduction band. So, only it starts filling from the bottom of the conduction band, it cannot fill below the conduction band because this is gap, nothing is here, right. So, similarly, similarly for holes, I told you, right, um, you have this k and then you have the hole here I am not very good at drawing but I think it is a parabola here. So, this is the top of the conduction band at k equal to 0. So, you know for holes also it will be same thing 4 pi by h cube 2 m star this will be whole effective mass hole also have an effective mass remember into uh, E v minus E why because this is E v the top of the conduct valence band as you go down it increases energy essentially right. So, more negative it is like the higher energy it is. So, E v minus any point here for example ok. So, it goes as square root of the E. So, this gives you uh, an idea of the density of states how many states are available hmm. how many states are available for electrons or for holes uh, right electrons or for holes uh, to for the electrons uh, holes to occupy the conduction band and valence band right. So, now we have two things right. So, now you know what is density of states we know density of states I call it DOS density of states which is essentially g of e ok. And then the number 2 is the Fermi function ok Fermi function which is given by f of e. So, essentially if I talk about electrons for example, I talk about electrons right electrons if I talk about electrons how many electrons are there the, it, the no total number of electrons that are there in a conduction band will actually depend on the product of density of states and the Fermi function sorry 
n the Fermi function you integrate it over the entire energy from the bottom of the conduction band here from here to infinity E c this bottom here to infinity. This gives you the total number of electrons which I will call n. Okay, this gives you the total number of electrons n and the unit is per centimeter cube. This is the energy electron volt this has no unit this is per unit energy per unit centimeter cube. So, the unit is per centimeter cube this gives you the number of what is actually happening it basically tells you how many states are there how many states are available right how many states are available that is the first question multiplied by what is the probability that you will occupy those states what is the probability that states are occupied those energy states are occupied right so essentially the product of how many empty states are how many energy states are there times what is the probability that those states will be occupied the product of these two function if you take the integration over energy from this bottom of the conduction band to entire infinity then you get the number of electrons that is what is happening here okay? and it is a very easy concept interesting concept we will not lose track of sight okay? we will always recap what we are doing so that we do not lose track of sight. So, for example, uh, you know <coughs> essentially on the energy axis if this is the energy this is E c for example your density of states will start only from here G of E and similarly this is holes for example the band gap is this one right this is the band gap okay. this is G of E for holes holes also have their own density of states electrons also have their own density of states because it depends on effective mass m star of electron and hole and that is different. So, elect electron and hole density of states also would be slightly different because the effective masses are different this is your density of states you have to multiply by the Fermi function you have to multiply by the Fermi function. So, of course, the Fermi function depends you know on the Fermi level also. So, how does the Fermi level go you know above the conduction band you should not have generally electrons, but you know the Fermi function for electrons for example will go something like this you know below the conduction band everything you know the idea is that uh, your electrons will be uh, if you take the Fermi level can be maximum here then it will be something like this okay, that is your Fermi level it is a Fermi function the probability it is very high probability it is almost 100 prob percent probability the electrons will be in valence band actually the electrons will be in valence band right. So, there is a almost 100 percent probability electrons will be in valence band at absolute 0 of course, nothing will be in conduction band, but at finite room temperature there will be a small small tail I told you right in the last class. So, in small temperature in a finite temperature there will be slight this right uh, above E c also there will be some electrons that is the probability will be there that is what at finite temperature it means at 0 Kelvin it will be just a rectangle. Okay. So, if you take the product of this red and blue you get this green thing here this one right how it looks like you know it looks like this is E c no. So, it will look like like this the product of these two one of them is decaying one of them is increasing. Similarly, this is E v you will have something like this. So, this is actually your electrons that are there in the conduction band this is actually your holes that are there in your valence band and this is your energy band gap E g okay. there is some electrons here there is some holes here. Okay. I am talking about at say room temperature which is say 300 Kelvin. Okay. At 0 Kelvin of course, you cannot have anything you know at, at finite temperature you will always have something. Okay. So, you have electrons in the conduction band little bit you have holes at the valence band little bit this is at room temperature. So, see there is a very critical thing uh, at any temperature other than 0 Kelvin at lower temperature this will become smaller at higher temperature this will become larger that is different thing, but at room temperature it will have it will be some amount right. So, you see at room temperature at 300 Kelvin it seems like there is always a, a finite number there will always be a finite number of electrons in conduction band right and there is a finite number of holes in valence band. This is a very important uh, you know profound finding actually if you think it deeply. So, at room temperature I have not added any intentional impurity I have not added any uh, I have not shining any light not applied any magnetic field nothing just a semiconductor 
crystal, a semiconductor wafer, in equilibrium. At room temperature, I haven't done anything to it. But still there is some electron that will be there, some hole that will be there in the valence band. Do you know why? I told you this comes from the density of states and the Fermi function. So density of states increases with energy above conduction band, you know. So this you see. What I am trying to say essentially is that you have the EK diagram here, right? This is EC, uh, of course, you know, this is your K diagram. So density of states increases as you go up, but the Fermi distribution dies down as you go up because all the electrons will be in valence band only. So there is very prob few probability that electrons will be there. So the Fermi probability comes down like this, okay. So the product of these two gives you this actually hump, okay. So now that will answer our, our very fundamental question that we had raised some time back and that is if this is your conduction band and this is your valence band for say I will take silicon, I will take silicon for example whose band gap this is 1.1 electron volt. It is a huge band gap, right? I mean it is some decent band gap. Room temperature energy K Boltzmann times temperature at room temperature is only 0 0.026 eV. So the electrons that are there in the valence band, this is valence band, right? They only have energy of 0 0.026 electron volt. With this small energy, thermal energy, this is the thermal energy provided by the room temperature, right? Like thermal vibration. So 0 0.026 electron volt with that kind of small energy, how can electrons jump this huge barrier of 1.1 eV? Because 1.1 is very large, 1.1 is very large, very, very large compared to 0 0.026. And in semiconductor, in all these energy processes, everything actually goes exponentially, okay. So this is a huge change, exponentially it will go. So it will go e to the power 1.1 by 0 0.026, okay. That is the actually that is the probability that electrons will actually surmount the barrier, okay. So this is very, very, very small probability that electrons can actually with 0 0.026 eV small energy, it is very small probability that electrons will be able to surmount from the conduction band, oh sorry valence band to the conduction band. Despite that, there is always a finite number of electrons here and there is always a finite number of holes here. I, that is obvious from the figure that I had drawn in the last slide. You see this figure, there is always some electron. This electron corresponds to the edge of the conduction band, this is at the edge of the valence band holes. So they always, those electrons and holes actually exist here. Electrons exist here, holes exist here. Despite a very, very low probability that electrons can hop, you know, jump across this barrier. And that is because of the fact that density of states is multiplied by the Fermi function. It is not only probability. It is not only probability that electrons will go from valence band to conduction band. It is also how many energy states are there that the probability and that the energy states has to be multiplied. And it seems like when you multiply and take an integration, there is actually a finite number. You know, it is much less than the Avogadro number, of course, it is much, much less than what is the atomic density. So for example, silicon might have 10 to the power 23 atoms, right, per centimeter cube, per centimeter cube of volume, you have so many atoms. But the probability is very low that electrons, uh, you know, will jump from one to the other thing. So actually the number of electrons that will be able to jump because of this probability times the density of states function is only 10 to the power 10. So you will have 10 to the power 10 electrons close to 10 to the power, how does it come? I will tell you, okay. 10 to the power 10 electrons will be there approximately per centimeter cube in the conduction band and similarly 10 to the power 10 holes also will be there per centimeter cube in the valence band at room temperature. So this is a much smaller number, 10 to the power 10 is a much smaller number compared to the atomic density. Okay, if one atom was to give one electron, then there should be 10 to the power 23, but that is not possible because this gap is huge, right. So the probability times the density of states gives you the realistic number of how many electrons are there here, how many holes are there here, it turns out that it is around 10 to the power 10 electrons and 10 to the power 10 holes that are actually there, right. So this number we will derive, how, how we derive that we will come to that, okay. So now before that, uh, I was actually in this, um, if you recall, I was telling you about the expression here, right. Um, so this expression, if you look into this expression, let us recall again, holes also will have a similar expression, but we are talking about electrons here. So first we will talk about electrons and holes will become the same thing, okay. So I telling you that electron at room temperature for example, okay, at room temperature, electrons in say, silicon, we are talking about silicon, I need a semiconductor, it is given by the integration from the bottom of the conduction band in infinity of the density of states, right, and then the Fermi function times the energy. 
okay times the energy so now if you do that calculation of course we do not want to completely solve the integral here that is their mathematic and other functions to do that it so happens that the density of states function is given by 4 pi h cube 2 m star to the power 3 by 2 e minus e c okay right e minus e c and then fermi function you know what is the you we read about fermi function this is given by 1 plus exponential e minus e f by k b t into d e now this is an integration that we have to do actually uh, and then this is a complicated integration that can be simplified by substituting some values we will not do that but eventually if you do that what will it will come you know n will be equal to some number n c i will come to that quickly into a fermi dirac integral of the half order of e f minus e c by k b t let us pause a second and wait into it this is actually an argument of the function okay this f half you know this f half this is a fermi integral this is actually fermi integral of half order so it is like f of half it is a fermi integral of half order you can put any x there so this x is actually this e f minus e c by k t okay so fermi level so if this is your conduction band this is your valence band fermi level could be anywhere the fermi level could be anywhere say it could be here i'll come to that explanation later on okay fermi level could be anywhere so ef minus ec so this gap negative of this gap ef minus ec divided by kt that is your x the argument here right so there are tables in an in internet also you can find out if you know this value if you know this gap divided by kt kt of course you know 0 0.0 to 6 so if you know this gap divided by kt a negative of that of course then you can find out that is x basically so f of the half of integral of that you can find out from tables or internet also and then you multiply with something called nc i'll come to that then gives you n this is a very simplified expression and this basically takes into account this entire integral that is there okay uh, so there are two things number one thing is what is actually uh, nc nc is called the effective effective i'm talking about electrons right so it will be effective conduction band effective conduction band density of states and the unit of nc is per centimeter cube it's not per centimeter cube per ev it's just per centimeter cube it's called effective conduction band density of states what it means is that this is the number of energy states at the bottom of the conduction band so if i have a ec and this is k so the number of states at the bottom of the conduction band here which when multiplied by f of e here at this point will give you the number of electrons that are there at the bottom of the conduction band okay so it basically means the sort of you can say this is the effective density of states corresponding to the bottom of the conduction band and its unit is per centimeter cube that's all what it means and actually nc has a very nice expression and that is given by 2 2 pi m star this is electron effective mass boltzmann times kt sorry uh, this has to go by h square not h bar square to the power 3 by 2 so you see this is actually density of effective density of states conduction band density of states this depends on the effective mass of electron so if the effective mass of electron is more your density of states at the conduction band edge also will be more that is understood it also depends on temperature if you increase the temperature the number the, the conduction band density of states also will increase similarly you will have an nv and this is conduction band density of states this is effective okay valence band effective density of states you can say valence band effective density of states so it's also like the density of states at the edge of the valence band here okay and its unit also nv unit also is per centimeter cube okay and this is given by 2 2 pi same thing except that it will be mass of whole okay kbt by h square to the power 3 by 2 so this density of states conduction band density of state valence band density of states are numbers that can be precisely estimated or determined for different semiconductor crystal because if you know the effective mass you know the temperature then you are done you can find out and physically this represents the number of electrons you can say that are actually at the edge of the conduction band uh, if if you multiply the density of states times the if you multiply this by the probability of finding the electron there it will give you that okay it's a very large number in general but this is your effective conduction band density of state so what is that talking about i was talking about this thing okay, um, you know you have you have your total electron concentration as your effective density of states conduction band density of states okay this is per centimeter cube remember fermi dirac integral has no unit 
and this is from the integral of x where x is equal to E f minus E c by k b t. Okay. Now, this looks little daunting or mathematically little scary, but do not be scared actually because this is a very simple expression that a lot of things can be inferred for the, from this. Okay. So, now in a material, in a material, so this is a in a semiconductor material, this is conduction band, this is valence band, okay. exactly at the middle, this is suppose the band gap of the material which is 1.1 eV, which is the band gap. You think of exactly the middle, almost the middle, okay. This is the middle of the band gap, and this is E g by 2, like this is 1.1 by 2, so this will be 0 0.55. Sorry, this will be say 0 0.55 EV, this will be also 0 0.55 EV. Okay, so if the Fermi level, if the Fermi level is somewhere here in the upper half, if the Fermi level is in the upper half is in the upper half. What does it mean? You know, if the Fermi level is in upper half, it means suppose the Fermi level is here. Okay, I will talk draw the Fermi level. Suppose this is your Fermi level. Okay, suppose this is your Fermi level E f. It means the probability of finding the electron is 50 percent at this level. Okay, it means the probability of finding the electron is 50 percent in this level the probability the 50 percent probability of finding the electron is closer to conduction band than to valence band. What it means physically is that there is a higher likelihood that there will be more electrons here, there will be more electrons here than there are holes here. So, if this is the case then the material has the material has or the semiconductor has for whatever reason more electrons more electrons okay it has more electrons than holes okay and vice versa which means if the fermi level if the fermi level is in the bottom half say if the fermi level is suppose here it means 50% probability of finding electron is actually here which means the 50% probability of finding electron is closer to valence band than to conduction band that means there will be fewer electrons here but more holes here in the valence band in that case, if the Fermi level is in the lower half, it means there will be more holes than electrons. Okay, there will be more holes than electrons. Okay, that we should keep that in mind. Okay. So uh, where was I? Yeah, I was here, right? So uh, there will be more electrons than holes. So these are very unique things actually. When elect when a material or a semiconductor has more electrons than holes, we call it n-type semiconductor. Okay, there are more electrons and if a material has more holes than electrons we call it p type p charge right when there are more holes than electrons okay more holes than electrons and the fermi level is in the lower half so that means there are more holes the probability of finding the electron is closer to valence band and valence band is always filled up with electrons right so it means there will be much fewer electrons in the conduction band more holes in the valence band so more holes than electrons means that the material is p type and more electrons than holes means that the material is n type now you cannot we cannot arbitrarily have higher electrons than holes or higher holes than electrons we have to add essential external impurities to do that if you do not add the external impurities then what will happen do you know suppose you do not add any impurity no light is shining no magnetic field is applied nothing no electric field is applied nothing then ideally uh, the electron and hole concentration will be identical. Okay. So, what I am trying to say is that uh, let us come to a new page here. Okay. I told you this is a conduction band, this is your valence band, you take exactly the middle here, that level is called E i, it is exactly middle here, right? This is E g by 2, this is E g by 2. Okay. Uh, if your semiconductor does not have any external impurity no light is shining no electric magnetic field and it is in equilibrium it is equilibrium okay, and no external impurities have been added. Okay. No external impurities have been added nothing has been done it is uh, a pristine a pure crystal no impurities are added. So, it is a it is a pristine 
it is like the pure form of semiconductor right that is called an intrinsic semiconductor intrinsic semiconductor sorry semiconductor ok. An intrinsic semiconductor in an intrinsic semiconductor the number of electrons is exactly equal to the number of holes. I told you the electrons are here in the valence band because of thermal energy k t there is a probability that they might go up very small probability, but because of density of states remember I keep telling about density of states every, every often right. Because of density of states there will be a finite number of electrons this hump you see there will be finite number of holes here right. The area under this electron and hole curve will be the same actually you see there will always be some electron that will try to go there and leaving behind hole. So, the number of electrons that are formed in the conduction band has to be equal to the number of vacancies left behind in this right because if 10 electrons go up here then 10 holes are remaining. So, number of electrons and number of holes has to be exactly same at room temperature for an intrinsic semiconductor and this number comes because of the probability times the density of states that are there ok density of states that are there. So, you see here the number of electrons and number of holes has to be exactly equal we call that n i it means intrinsic carrier concentration it is called intrinsic carrier concentration. So, uh, now this is a very interesting we are entering into a very very interesting and exciting semiconductor device concepts. So, let me uh, wrap up the class today here lecture the we will we'll wrap up the class here uh, and the next class we will start from here ok the electrons and holes are equal in an intrinsic semiconductor. So, in what case will electrons be more than holes or in what case will holes be more than electrons that is important right p type and n type semiconductor we will start from there ok. So, thank you for uh, your time here again we will wrap up the class today with the concept of intrinsic semiconductor ok thank you.